Hello and welcome, Muscle and Strength. This is Lee Haney. We're going to have an awesome time today. I'll get a chance to walk you through a little bit of my legacy. You'll get to see my home. We'll get to talk about some of the trophies and some of my experiences. Appreciate having you guys here. Come on. All right, we're now standing in front of my fireplace and we're checking out the Sandow trophies. Only the best in the world gets one of these. I got eight of them, which makes me a bad motor scooter. So anyway, guys, as far as which ones were the first to the last, I'm not sure. All of these guys are, as you see, the same nationality, <laughs> Sandows. And uh, just a little bit of history of, about the Sandow Trophy. Eugene Sandow was the first documented strongman other than Samson in the Bible. So this has been a trophy that epitomized the greatest physique in the world, as far as the IFBB is concerned, in the world of professional bodybuilding. Now you have two different types of uh, Sandows here. One is the, this was a first style, and I can't tell you guys which year. Then you have the other one here that's a little bit, have a smoother base. And a lot of people say, well, Lee, why, did, why didn't you do uh, nine or 10 Mr. Olympias? I took this as an omen. There was only enough room for eight. So eight was enough. And very proud of that. You see here the, uh, the plaque in the back. This was given to me by Mr. Ben Weeder himself, who was the founder of the International Federation of Bodybuilding. That is a Distinguished Service Award. And it was truly an honor to receive that. And this is also a medal given by the IFBB, again, Mr. Ben Weeder, for the Achievement Medal. So I was truly honored to receive all of these different type of awards from the IFBB. Well, I would say the greatest of all of them was, I would say first and last, because the first one was truly a dream come true. You know, when the first one said, wow, you've arrived, you've made it. Mr. Olympia, that's a miracle in itself. And at that point I said, well, you know, one Olympia is great, but I would love to do at least three Mr. Olympias. And all of a sudden I won three. I had three Mr. Olympia trophies. Like, wow, this is incredible. Then I thought to myself, well, how about five? Because five is a, is, is a record in itself. You know, uh, Serge Olivier had won three. Frank Zane had won three. So let's try to at least best their record. And I was successful in doing so by winning five. But after getting to five, I said, well, okay. Uh, seven in a row is a record in itself because I only had won six consecutive wins and still had seven overall. And so all of a sudden, I got to my seventh Olympia. And at that time, I said, well, listen, this is a record in itself. No one has ever won seven consecutive Mr. Olympia trophies. And I never will forget, I sat down with my wife, Shirley, and we had a discussion. And I said to her, I said, well, baby, no one has ever did seven in a row, this is a record in itself. What do you think, should I stop? Now she says to me, well, what do you mean stop? You gotta go for the egg, what's the matter with you? So, almost embarrassed, but I sucked it up and we jumped in there together and went for the eighth Miss Olympia and I won. Second place winner, who is? Dorian Yates. Well, when physiques started to change, and that change began with Dorian, I really felt 1991 was uh, a great year, of course for me, <laughs> it was a record-breaking year, but I thought it was a great year for Dorian too, to see where he was at that particular time. He had a beautiful physique, he had very nice lines. I still thought there were some things that were a little bit different about his physique. You know, I wore 30, 32 inch waist. Uh, you know, we compared the shoulder and the waistband. That was, that was very different. Uh, Dorian came in a little wider waist, but what sort of went differently 
was the following year, he had gained probably, I don't know, was it 15 to 20 pounds more, which gave him a totally different look, a more massive, grainy look, not one uh, that the world of bodybuilding was used to seeing. But it also said, because of his win, that the judges were ready to, ready to see something new, something different. Uh, was that good for the sport? Ah, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I let the organization make his own decision about that. You know, my era was my era, and everybody liked to feel that their era was the best era. I feel that way about my era, so, so they don't feel that way about heels and so forth. So the physique started to get bigger and bigger, and I felt they started to lose the symmetry and the balance, and things that wasn't allowed during my era became commonplace, which means a heavier waist structure. You no longer saw the vacuum as a, a regular staple uh, when it came to physiques. And so it, it, was, it was different, it was different. I like the fact that bodybuilding now has room for everybody. There's room for the massive physiques, there's room for the classic physiques, there's room for the physiques. So there's several different categories now. And who's to say which is the most lovable? There's choices, and I like that, you know, and the people like that. So there you go.